Our first video for Calc 2 will be covering the concept of the integral from a to b of f of x dx defined as signed area. Now I know that some of you already know how to calculate some definite integrals, but I want you to forget about what you've learned before and only use signed area in section 5.1. As with any topic in mathematics that you've studied, in order for us to communicate effectively in class and for you to be able to read your textbook with meaning, you must have the vocabulary in mind that the author uses. So this whole expression is read, the integral from a to b of f of x dx. And let's define what we mean by these different parts of the expression. A and B are called the limits of integration. B is the upper limit of integration and A is the lower limit. The white sign here, of course, that's the integral sign and the f of x, the function that you'll see before the dx, is the integrand. The integrand is the function, and dx for now, we'll just kind of think of it as a period, the end of the integrand. In later calculus courses, it will become very important. But for Calc 2, uh, since we only use functions of one variable as integrands, the dx is, is, uh, doesn't play a big role. So do say it when you read the expression, but it doesn't have a particular meaning at this point. Okay, well the next two slides will give us the definition of the integral in terms of signed area. First of all, read, read these kinds of things very carefully because, for example, when uh, the author writes, let f be a function defined on the closed interval a, b, he tells us something very important about a, b without actually saying it. A, a, the closed interval a, b tells us that a is less than b. So when he goes to define the, inter the integral from a to b, we know that the lower limit is to the left of the upper limit on the x-axis. In other words, a is less than b. Then we can say that the integral from a to b of f of x is the signed area of the region bounded by, well, the vertical lines x equals a, x equals b, the curve itself, and the x-axis. So I'll draw you an example. Let's just say that f of x looks like this. And let's say that a is here, and b, well, b could be anywhere to the right. That's all we know is that A is less than B in this definition. And I will draw, let's see, get a different color again. Uh, let's see, I'll take yellow. Okay, so let's draw the region bounded by the vertical line X equals A, the vertical line X equals B, the function itself, and the x-axis. So we have four little regions here. This one, this one, four little regions making up the larger one, and the signed area will be computed from calculating the areas of those smaller regions. Now the thing about signed area is this. Any region above the x-axis gives us a positive contribution. In other words, the area of this region would be calculated and added. Then any region, oh excuse me, any region below the x-axis gives a negative contribution. Here we have a little region above the x-axis which will contribute positively its area and 
the area of this last little region, which is under the x-axis, will give us a negative contribution. So we would, to calculate the signed area, if, if the area of this region was A, and this region was B, and this region was C, and this region was D, A, B, C, and D would be the areas of those corresponding regions. A, B, C, and D would be positive numbers. They are areas. But the signed area would be calculated by adding in A, subtracting B, adding C, subtracting D. This would be equal to the signed area. So up at the top I've written signed area is different than area in that regions under the x-axis give negative contributions to the signed area. So let's do this example here. The first thing we want to do is always identify the integrand. The integrand is f of x is 2 minus x. And we want to graph this integrand over the interval negative 1, 8, the closed interval. So let's do that. All right, so 2 minus x from minus 1 to 8. I guess I need my x axis out further here. From minus 1, minus 1 to 8. And 2 minus x is a line, so let's just, we always need two points. Let's stick in minus 1. 2 minus negative 1 is 3. So that's the point negative 1, 3, an important point on our line. And let's put in the other end point. Uh, here of our interval. 8, 2 minus 8 is negative 6, so our point here will be 8, comma, negative 6. And now I draw the line. I draw the function y equals f of x. All right, so let's take a different color here and let's draw the vertical lines x equals 1, negative 1, x equals 8, the x-axis, and the curve itself. So we do see, in this case, two regions that are determined by this graph. And this would be another important point here, wouldn't it? Where 2 minus x is 0 is where x is equal to 2. So now we have our regions drawn, and you then want to find the areas of the regions. The area of this little triangle will be 1 half its base times height. We see that it, this distance is 3, this distance is 3, so the area is 3 times 3 times 1 half or 9 halves. The area of the larger triangle, notice I'm calculating area. I'm not worrying about whether or not it's above or below the x-axis. I'm calculating its area. So let's see, 8 minus 2, it has 6, and this is 0 minus negative 6, so we have 6 for its height here, and its area then is 1 half base times height is 6 times 6, 36 over 2, or the area is 18. So we have an area of 9 halves and an area of 18. But what we have to do now is remember that this region, let me get a different color. I'll go back to white. This gives us a positive contribution. This will give us a negative contribution. So our assigned area is minus 9 halves, excuse me, plus 9 halves minus 18. Positive 9 halves minus 18. So that would be uh, 9 halves minus 36 halves, which was negative 27 halves. This is how you will evaluate a definite integral in section 5.1. You make sure that the lower limit is to the left of the upper limit of integration. You graph 
the function over that interval, determine the regions, and then find their areas. Lastly, you calculate the signed area by letting the regions above the x-axis contribute their positive areas and subtracting the areas of the regions underneath the x-axis. Okay, let's do one more example before you try your, your hand at this. Um, here we have the, the integrand we see is the function f of x. Here's the, the integrand is f of x is equal to the square root of 4 minus x squared. Well, this is the same thing as y. We have to graph it, so let's see what is this thing. y is equal to 4 minus x squared, the square root of it. If you square both sides and add x squared, you get y squared plus x squared is equal to 4. So this is just part of the circle. This is where y is the positive square root. So if we graph the circle of radius 2 centered at the origin, and we just want the top part of it. That is this curve here. y is the positive square root. y is positive above the x-axis. But now look back to your interval of integration. It's 0, 2. So the region that we have here is this one. We don't need this part of the circle just from 0 to 2. And this region is going to give us a positive contribution of its area. So we need to calculate the area of that region, which is not bad because it's just the quarter of the area of a circle. So it would be 1 fourth the area of the circle of radius 2, which is pi times r squared, 4, 2 squared. So we get pi, and that is equal to the integral from 0 to 2 of the square root of 4 minus x squared dx is equal to pi. So all of the examples that you're going to do will have regions which, if you draw them out properly, you will be able to use prior knowledge, either a formula from geometry for area, trapezoid, triangle, rectangle, or circle to calculate the signed area. So for the quiz tomorrow, I want you to become an expert on this definition of the definite integral in terms of signed area. Uh, practice with numbers, the odd, the odd problems in numbers 7 through 21. The answers are in the back of the book, so you just do it using signed area, graph the regions, compute the areas, and then add or subtract the areas accordingly to get signed area. And check your answers in the back of the book. So do them until you understand each one. The, when, when you work these problems, if you understand the concept, the problems will begin to all look the same. So you're not learning how to do each problem, but you're learning the concept by doing the problems. And study all the vocabulary introduced in this video, and on the quiz I will ask you vocabulary, and I will ask you to do one problem similar to the ones uh, that you will have done while practicing.